Hey, my peeps. Welcome to On the Mic with the M. And T. And today's discussion is going to be what? Hmm. Let's talk about second chances. Oh, okay. And more than second chances, how many chances? Okay. So you know what I do for a living, naturally, right? I do mm. hair. Uh-huh. And I'm just that great friend who mm. people call. So I always hear the conversation pieces um, as far as the back and forth with the male and female. And I'm just curious, like, when is enough enough? And I'm sp not specific to dating or marriage because, to me, they kind of end up being almost like the same, mm -hmm. right? You've been mm -hmm. dating someone for 20 years <laughs> or you've been married to them for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Either way, there's a lot of stuff going on in the relationship where it's like, at what point is enough enough? Well, for me, I, I think personally, when it starts to affect you personally, I mean, you're not just a little emotionally, you know, we could talk about, you know, he, she or he hurt my feelings mm -hmm. or we, we get, don't get along. That happens. That's relationships. You're always going to have good times, bad times. But what you need to do is think about if this person is causing you so much angst that when you get up in the morning, you're like, what's my purpose? Why, why am I here? Right. And, 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 and why do I take this? That's when you need to walk away because now that person starting to mess with the essence of who you are. Okay, so what generally happens is we're going to walk away, right? And mm -hmm. then we get the whole, like, baby, please, baby, please, baby, please, please, please. I'm going to do everything oh, better. Lord. And I mean everything. Mm -hmm. Not just a little bit, everything. <laughs> I swear <laughs> I'll do it all right. Yes. Now, you ain't got it right for the last, I don't know, how many years. Pick the, rela pick the person and it would be a different time stamp. But it always kind of seems to be the same consist consensus. You know, as soon as it's time for you to go, then you tighten on up. Swear to the woman oh, Lord. that you, <laughs> you know what I'm talking I, about. I know exactly what you're talking about. And that goes back to him, basically him looking at what he can get away with. Mm. Um, as men, we kind of we start off saying it's wide open. We don't really know you, so. No, you know, know these women. It's five years later, minimum. Okay, now minimum. Five years of <laughs> minimum. You have already set boundaries, <laughs> so I pretty much know what I can and what I can't get away mm. with. So as long as I'm within the boundaries, I'm cool. Now, mind you, between year or day one and year five, I have pushed those boundaries different ways. Okay. So along the way, there was a boundary that would, may have been, you know. 200 feet but now i've done certain things did you allow me to go 300 feet right and in this particular area you may let me go 75 feet in this particular area then i was like, oh i'm down to 50 feet on this side so you start to kind of feel what you can and what you can't get away mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. and, and keep on not, doing it and you know what you allow women allow that to happen yes yes because I would agree. again you control the relationship and i said this to someone a while ago i said Ultimately, women control the relationship. How did they how did they receive that? Because I I don't know that women will receive that too well. What? Well, because it's, Because it's the like truth. it's the tr it's our job to put an end to the relationship and then still hold on to all these feelings and emotions that you have for this person and then y'all you call that control? So, let me just go ahead and say this. Women you control the entire relationship. And I say this because a man could come after you. I don't care how fine he is. I don't care how much money he got. I don't care about any of that. You had the final say if you accept that guy. So he could come to you and say, girl, I got, listen, I got money out the yin yang. I got this, that, other thing. You could say no. But when you say, okay, I'll deal with you, you had the final say, not us. So when you say, okay, I accept you, then you pretty much say, I'm open myself up to anything that, that happens to me. So False. you have to control that. Well, we, we didn't say open up to anything. 
we accepted you under these conditions in the beginning, yeah. And then you get into a situation, and then it's like, psych. <laughs> 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 oh boy, yeah. Let me tell you what you said in the other ones. Take the mask off. No, y'all have so many masks. So many masks. Yes, yes. And it's like, I most of the women that I know, mm -hmm. I don't, I just don't know if they're dating with this number of masks on. Like it's just. Just regular girls trying to find a regular relationship, trying to be respectful, not trying to take advantage of any guy. And it's always like, where to refund that, man? Bring that, bring that ass back. Come on. Nah. Uh-uh. But see, there's, he ain't it. there's your million dollar mistake. Mm -hmm. Your million dollar mistake is to look at him and think that he's, what he's saying to you is who he is. And for men, we're never going to take the mask off and say, here's how vulnerable I am. You know, I, 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 I just need love. I, you know, it's not an LL Cool J song, I need love. This is, this is a dude that's saying, I have an agenda. And based on how you look and based on how you carry yourself, my agenda changes accordingly. So uh, you're fine. Okay. And I'm like, okay, you're fine. So I'm going to do what I can do to get next to you. To, to so get you've to already you. summed me up in your intentions for me. In the beginning, yes, because I don't really Whereas know Whereas me, I just was trying to see if you was going to get me on the path to marriage because no. generally that's mm -mm. what I'd be in the, like, that's men, what, mm -mm. why else are the women dating? Well. They're trying to find the men getting them to the finish line. Well, see, that's. Yeah, you're, we're looking for that forever guy. That's what y'all looking for. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that's what y'all looking for. And you know that's what we looking for. But for us, uh -huh. we're the only, let's be honest. I'm not speaking for all men. I'm speaking for quite a few men. Mm -hmm. Then I'm looking at the woman and say, you know what? Damn, that's something I want to get married to. Especially if you're young. You know you're trying to get <laughs> no, no, no. You try, you try and get it. <laughs> so you saying to me that when men scope us out, the first thing they're not thinking about is marriage? Hell no. Hell to the no, no, no. They ain't thinking about no goddamn marriage. Talking about, I'm going to put a ring on your finger, put you in a nice little house with a white picket fence, and we had three and a half kids and a dog, and, and, and maybe have a, a, a RV to, to travel to the yeah. country. Hell no. Yeah. We're looking at you like, damn, she's fine. And, and I, mm, I wonder how good is she? I wonder how she could. I, I wonder what she can do. What, what makes her special? I wonder if. Oh. We're, we're thinking like, we're thinking tangibles. We're not thinking about. Yeah, I'm going to walk down the aisle and what color scheme is going to be, what kind of ring you're And y'all trying to grow stuff. old together type of thing. No, 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 uh, no, You don't no. that y'all not ready to grow no, old. No, <laughs> at 20 some years of age, of, of age, we're not thinking about marriage. We are at not, what age are we thinking about marriage in the dating realm? To be honest, for, <laughs> I'm going to use this term, the level of manhood that the guy's in. Mm -hmm. if, he's, uh, if he's at, I'm going to use level one, he's probably looking at 30. Because by... 18 to 29, he's out there. I don't use the term "sowing his wild oats," but he's out there <laughs> searching and just trying to figure what he likes. Because which, so you gotta taste all the flavors to see which ones you like. We gonna sample. We gonna sample some pecan, black pecan. <laughs> we gonna maybe some a samples. You know, vanilla, chocolate. You know, the uh, Neapolitan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you may like a little taste of this now and then. Sometimes you may like a little bit. Sometimes you may not like it. But you're not just going to settle. I'm just going to grab this particular uh, flavor, and that's what I'm going to flow with because mm. you're young. Okay. So, and now, again, dealing with a man and what level of manhood is he in? Because let me say this. A lot of men don't have a clue about levels of manhood. Don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, I'm 18 years old. I'm a man, and I can do this. Nah, fool. You you still a boy. You still you still got something like on on your breath. You you yeah. haven't you haven't especially today's eighteen year olds. Oh, they don't have a clue. Yeah. They don't have a damn clue. So they don't know. They can't say that I'm looking for this type of woman who's gonna make me. Are happy. they looking for women at eighteen nowadays? No. no. <laughs> like, no. It's a little no. bit weird no. what's no. going on with mm. the with the uh, youth as far as them courting each other. It's different. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's not like before. Before you had to meet. The, it, it, the dating realm has changed drastically. I mean, before you had to meet someone, you could, somebody may have set you up. You know, you may have an aunt, auntie that says, hey, I got a, a you, you mean young, 
Yeah. Before. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Like, oh, he's a good guy. He's a good kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a niece over here that, and it connects you. Mm -hmm. And you may or may not like each other, but they connect you because you're nice kids. Yes. And it may be something, may not, y'all may be friends. But now there's a swipe left, swipe right. Oh. And then, you, you know, you're looking at IG, you look uh -huh. at everybody shaking all the goodies. It's real goodies. shallow. Yeah, because again, <laughs> I'm going to say this. Everybody, you get the same amount of asses and titties on IG that you would get anywhere else. And so now you're like, okay, they all got the same TNA. So what is more, what difference? You see, like, in other words, every female has the same amount on Instagram. That's what you're I saying? I try to enhance Plus or minus a little bit. But yeah. once it goes online, you can pretty much do whatever you want to do with it. Okay. Exactly. So now okay. you're like, okay, I see all this, all this. Mm -hmm. So now what makes them special? Because again, let's see if all all of them are cute, all of them look good, all of them, you know, say the same thing. They like fun. They like music. Like mm -hmm. this. Like okay, that's fine. So why should what really makes you different than the other ten or the other hundred I'm looking at? So for the guy, he's gonna have to somehow just pick one because he can't say, well, yeah, her. You know, her booty is... is you is used big. to go out with them and hang out with them oh, yeah, and yeah. get to know them. And the chemistry would tell you what, which woman was... Uh, at least I thought used to he think used it was to. the chemistry. <laughs> you uh, know, you'd be out with the friends from school and, you know, somebody you crushing on somebody, not because of how they look, just, just only because of how they look, but there's some chemistry between you two. Yes. but then Because you, you had an interaction, though. But there's no interaction online. No, it's yeah. just matter what you look. And everybody wants to you got filters. Uh -huh. So everybody looks beautiful until the chick pulls up and she got acne all over her face and, and she ain't looking <sighs> at like, wait a minute, what happened? You you done gained about hundred pounds. What the hell happened? I she didn't gain any weight. <laughs> she just, you know, knew knew her angles. Oh, there was some damn good angles. Yeah. At that yeah. point when you start looking at like you look at the <laughs> look at the phone yeah. and you look at her like you said take a pit. That speaks to the fact that there's a lack of a social interaction and getting to know people because then you have like this false idea. You see the one girl on Instagram and you don't get to know her, know her. So she presents herself as being the best in whatever category and arena she's playing in. Whereas the girl next door, you kind of know her and you know, all the stuff that her and her family kind of went through because she literally lives next door. But you have um, your eye on something that's quote unquote better than um, the girl next door because you know that there, it's not it's not perfect over here. Mm -hmm. um, and you keep seeing something that is perfection. I guess what Instagram created, because we only put our best foot forward All the on time. social media. That's true. You never see a bad. Have you ever seen a bad IG f photo? I, I've, I've seen bad posts and people cry, but I'm sad that they put it on there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, please stop. Yeah, yeah. Please stop. That's not the place to put that. Sulk and cry. No. Don't talk about your family on so, so social media. Family no. pissed you off, and you're like, my family ain't shit. Huh? <laughs> the whole family? Because I haven't seen you in 17 years, and now the whole family ain't worth nothing. Yes. Wow. I'm sorry I have seen people get to their bad points, but you still don't want to really see it. You're hoping that they erase it at some point, too. You would hope so. Yeah. Um, and, and I think as a society, we have gotten to this point where we kept, we've been pushing this perfectness that doesn't exist. Um, and everybody wants yeah. to feel like they're perfect. Everybody wants to feel like, you know, if you see what you see on IG, that maybe they'll like me. But they don't. what they don't understand is that's just a front. Mm -hmm. That's a facade. Well, it's not necessarily a front or a facade. It's, a, it's an album of highlights, things that I chose to highlight. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't choose to highlight rough moments in my life. I overcame those. True. Keeping it moving. I I don't want to highlight those. It's so very true. Yeah, we had. Say it again. We as a culture glorify the struggle. We do. So if you show your bad times, you show your struggle. But I don't want to show. I don't want to be reminded of that all the time. Cause that's what social media does for you. 
it reminds you of um, past events. And so mm-hmm. there's certain things that you make sure you're putting on social media because you know what's going to pop up next year. Like, oh, no, I got to make sure I post this because it's going to pop up for me next year to keep me remembering stuff. Now, and if I toss on there a traumatic breakup or, you know, a traumatic uh, situation in the family and then, you know, I'm still trying to get through that or I'm healing from that and a year later it pops back up, I'm like, here we go again. I was trying to get away from this. Yes, because social media does not go away. No, it doesn't. It's there. Once you post it, it's there forever. Yeah, and then somebody else might have shared it to somebody else, so now they have a copy of it, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, they'll send it to you in a year, even though it's not, you know, maybe on your page anymore. Exactly. It still kind of comes right on back to you, like, hey, remember this? Or if it doesn't pop back up, somebody will randomly be going through all of your pictures and they'll just start liking your stuff again and it'll make <laughs> yep. you see it again, right? It, it becomes true. relevant. So somebody start liking your old posts and then somebody else saw that, so they started liking them again. And then you're like, why is this picture recirculating? What is happening? It's social media. Yes. This stuff never goes away. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's the thing. That's the, the curse of social media. Um, people live their lives good, bad, and different through social media, which is really crazy to me because if you're taking pictures of everything that happens in your life, you're not really living your life. Yeah, you're spending your time being like the reporter, the recorder reporter. Of your own life. Yeah. And saying, look at my life and what do you think? And so mm-hmm. you, you're letting people who don't give a rat's ass about you personally tell you, dictate how your life should be. Mm-hmm. So, and you look at, again, stepping back, you look at somebody whose life is probably more fucked up than yours. Yeah. Looking and say, well, you know, whew, at least my life ain't as bad as hers. Vic, are you sitting there trying to figure out why you can't afford what they're doing? Mm-hmm. And never not at any moment even caring to, like, tie down your situation. You're just trying to figure out how to do what they're doing. Not yes. worrying about your financial freedom, not worrying about your financial foundation, stability, or anything. You just want to know how did... You know, cousin such and such um, able to purchase this car because naturally they posted the new car on Facebook. Oh, obviously. Got mm-hmm. to. Yeah. Or, you know, how were they able to get this house or how mm-hmm. were they able to go on this vacation? You're never mm-hmm. checking your own self saying, you know, <laughs> how can I get a little bit more money in my savings account? That is the problem. Mm-hmm. This world is so, we're, it's almost like we're just, we're, we're, but watching the world operate as a TV show, it's almost like my life is so miserable, so bad, that I have to look at other people's lives and just either be happy or sad or whatever based on what they're doing rather than to look at myself or my life and mm-hmm. saying, what am I doing? What's happening in my world? Because ultimately, that's all that, that matters is your world. It is. And how do you find happiness? First of all, you got to find happiness within yourself, which we've said many times, but people don't want to do that work. I think that, hmm, that's, it, to women, sometimes we don't like that phrase, right? Happiness is within. Because mm. once I find my happiness within, then you come and rattle up my whole space, talking well, about well, happiness is within, and you told me you was going to go half on this bill, and then the bill come around and you didn't go half on it. Now I'm mad, mad, and you talking about, but happiness is from within. <laughs> Bitch, I'll kill you. <laughs> like, so, yeah, happiness is within, but don't get, like, you know, don't get it twisted. People can um, come in and kind of disturb your, yes. th- your core. Like, and that that's not, I'm happy within myself, but I'll be damned if you didn't do something to me that disturbed me. <laughs> <laughs> See. Again, you looking at me as with a certain lens, and I'm looking at you a certain lens. And mm-hmm. if you if you both were sitting there and looked at how we both look at each other, you'd be sur- you'd be surprised how we look at women, mm-hmm. and we were surprised how you look at us because we were like, wait a minute, you putting all that on us? Like you want to get married? You want to get settled down? You want to do that? Most guys, most guys aren't looking at that. Just real talk. There's some guys out there that do look mm-hmm. at that based on who they are and where they are. Um, but most guys, they're looking for that. They're looking for a good time. For, who, you know. who are their influences? Well. Who's it, teaching them the ropes? Here, here's, the, here's the bigger problem. The bigger issue is we the lack of male, good real, male role models is the problem we got with men being men today. Okay. Um, and I blame... 
I, I could blame a whole lot of people, but it really starts with the two people who had the kid in the first place, mm-hmm. because that goes back to if it doesn't work out, somebody needs to raise it. The male has to be in a relationship or be in that kid's life to at least show that kid what it looks like to have both sides of it. Men are so easy. Take that turn back. Boys are so easy for them to walk away because to them, you know, that's responsibility. I ain't asked for this because since I'm not going to get them goodies no more and we yeah. got this situation, yeah. I don't want to even deal with the What kids. is that about? Because you can't have access to the woman's body anymore. You don't owe her anything. But y'all have children. There's a, there's a sense of <laughs> property. Again, men, boys. I, I, yeah, let's make that yeah. clear. Boys look at women as property. Boys look at, the, if I can't get it and I can't do what I need to do or get what I normally get, then I, she should be able to take care of the kid. I give a little money here and there. but Here I and sh- there. Here and there. But, but the rent always do. Oh, doesn't matter. And the f- grocery bill always ready. Don't matter. I can't Kids get them Kids always hungry. Can't get them. Can't get them goodies. So you, and, and you're going to find somebody else. Guarantee you're going to find another dude. So mm-hmm. let him be concerned with that. <laughs> let, let, let him worry That's about That's the favorite yes. phrase. Let him do Let that. him take care of the kids. Yeah, he over there. Huh? Mm-hmm. He over there. Now, the boy don't understand that that's his child. Mm-hmm. That's part of him. Right. So if you deny him, you're denying yourself, which goes back to self-hate. Lack, lack of self-love, self-hate, not really knowing what that connection is. Thinking it's just, oh, you know, a kid. Not realizing that's part of you. That's an that's extension, an extension. Of you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you deny the kid, you deny yourself. Absolutely. Forget the woman. You deny yourself, whether yeah. it's a girl or, or a boy. And they can't they can't wrap their mind around it because that means if they did wrap their mind around it, then they gotta be responsible. Yeah, I think that a lot of times it's easy to say, um, let let somebody else take care of the child as opposed to saying, hey, yeah, no, I no longer want to be a father to my own child. I'm going to allow another man to adopt my kid and raise my mm. child. Nobody can, Nobody's ever going to say those words nope. out loud, put actual labels on them. Yes, I'm going to be a dirtbag person. Mm-hmm. Father, um, yes, I would like another man to allow my children to call them dad. Mm. Um, like when you say, because you, those are the things you're actually saying. Yes. Yes, I would like to turn my back on my child who, you know, me and him used to actually be cool. I actually used to like this kid. And now all of a sudden, because you don't have the mom anymore, because you didn't do right by her. Um, now you're like, I'm not not playing with those kids no more. Nope. They're still your children. They are still your kids. And mm-hmm. that is the problem that we, the reason we got the issues we got right now. Boys refuse to grow up to be men. They want to play that. They want to use that term "men" when it's convenient. Yeah, well, I'm a man because I'm, I'm a man. Any real man don't go around and tell people I'm a man. Yeah, I've never heard any of them say Because real men do it handle their business. Real men just do it. Yeah. But when you hear boys talk about, "Oh, I'm a man. I got a gang of kids," and blah blah blah. First of all, are you taking care of them. Mm-hmm. That's my first question. And when you hear people talk, "Well, I got four or five kids," are you taking care of them? Because it's hard. Very hard. When you got more than three. I mean, it's very hard. I mean, the fact that you have three, I thought technically would be the max if they're active and have sports and stuff. Exactly. So what could you possibly be doing with four plus children? They're looking at the everybody. The boys look at the money aspect of it. All oh, because you sent the home money. the money. Yeah, I sent that money, and no. that money should deal with this. That's such a small part of it. It's a it's a good part of it, but a small part of it because you also got to be there for that kid's emotional mm-hmm. well being. You have to properly influence your children. Yes, mm-hmm. if you don't, society will, mm-hmm. or that guy who's now raising will. You don't mm-hmm. know who that guy is, or no one will properly influence your child, and he'll probably be a man child. He'll yes. stay a boy. Yes, mm-hmm, which we see today. We see it all the time. Next year, you know, she he she he driving the girl's car. She going to work, baby boy. Um, he's not huh. doing anything, and then when, when we get paid, or oh, yeah, I ain't got no money. Yeah, and then you mad because the woman is mad that you're driving around in her vehicle. In her car. You ain't on insurance. While she's at work, and you're picking up other women. But somehow, when she says, enough is enough, you mad. Yep. It's like, that's the audacity. <laughs> and that is the reason why. We have to go back 
it makes some changes on how we deal with raising kids as men. Mm -hmm. Real men know that we got to do what they need to do. And even to a real man, how real men think. When my son was, since he's been around, and there's times when I'll be in the living room and I, at nighttime he sleep, wife sleep, and I'm looking out the window like, am I doing enough? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm busting my butt, I'm working, you know, 12 hour days and everything. Am I really, truly doing enough to take care of him? And let me tell you, my, my, my father-in-law, he passed. I miss that man, great man. And I asked him that question. He said, son, that's what men do. Men don't sit back and go to bed and think like, oh, I've done all I can do and go to bed and sleep very well. He said, you don't. Because as a man, you're always looking to make sure that you're taking care of your family at every turn, making sure that you're doing enough to take care of your family at every yeah. turn. So when I was like, so it's not unusual that I'm up at 2 or 3 in the morning. You know, I go in there, I see my wife in there sleep. She comfortably sleep. My mm -hmm. son and he in there sleep. I go in there and kiss him on the head. Like, you know, I'm just happy. I'm just hoping that I'm the role model that for you. I'm mm -hmm. hoping I'm doing enough to, to say, hey, you're, you're going to learn how to be a man for me. Um, and those are, those are constant things that, that I always told myself growing up, you know, with the family, with a young child that, Am I doing enough? And I keep pushing myself. Those, that's what men do. Men, you, you go out your way and make sure you're doing all you can to make sure that you take care of your family. Absolutely. Um, but there's a lot of guys that don't think that way. I, I mean, hmm. That, that, when you say they go to sleep real easy, I can understand why some men would drink. That's going to put them to sleep. They're not sitting up thinking about that all night. No. They said, no, let me toss two back and get rid of those thoughts and go to sleep because I'm going to have to wake up and do it all over again. I and, can understand. Okay. And that's why a lot of them, they, they use things because let me tell you, there's times that I would get up at 6, son got to be at school by 8, 15. I'll be at work, and then I'll come down, pick him up from school. Then if he got, you know, if he got lacrosse or whatever, then we go get something to eat, and then he has homework and all that. But for me, I still got work to do, you mm -hmm. know. So I'm, I'm spending my time, quality time, and everything with him. Then I got to go. I got to work because I got to make up for the time during the day I didn't work. Absolutely. So I got to do that. That was that was a given. And I, I mean, for you, this time he would wake up and be like looking for me, like, "Damn, you still working? Yeah, going back to sleep, son. This ain't, this, this ain't your concern. You go." You going to school, you being good. That, you did your job. That's your you job. did your task. Yeah. My job is staying here, making sure I take care of handling my business to make sure I take care of the family. Right. So the family doesn't want for anything. So that's not being taught. Or, you know, because again, if you have guys or guys who are bought by their mothers, the mm -hmm. mother's just trying to keep. That, again, that influence is just not present. It's not pre present. Mm -hmm. Because that boy is at somebody else's house with another potential victim and I'm gonna say that because she he gonna end up having a baby by that poor woman and now he gonna have a gang of kids around different different women talking about you yeah I got I got these kids you know I take care of my responsibility and which is a lot mm -hmm. an absolute lot there's no way in hell that you can take care of five kids on your little seven dollar and 25 cent hour salary and be there mostly for these kids and different houses mm -hmm. so that goes back to the responsibility so these boys aren't responsible. They just grow up to be man children. Right, right. And you're wondering why, like, damn. Let me, let me say this. I am glad I don't have a daughter. Because if I had a daughter and I see these, these bums that are out here now mm -hmm. that are being raised, I would, would choke his ass out. I'd be like my boy on um, <laughs> Bad Boy 2. When he comes pick her up, I have a gun. Like, boy, you look 30. <laughs> you ain't coming here and pick up, you ain't picking up a goddamn thing. You gonna take your goofy ass. You gonna go on? Cause uh, we work at. What, what your father do? Oh, I ain't got no daddy. You ain't got no daddy. What are you talking? About? You ain't got no daddy. You can't hold that against them. So now I'm trying to find yes, where you. Now I'm trying to find where your head is. <laughs> so basically, you're saying um, a child inside of a single parent household, specifically the woman, the boy will grow up and will be groomed and programmed to think that it is normal for the woman to dominate the household and to maintain the household with almost with exclusivity. 
as if that's normal lifestyle, life being. So as he comes into adulthood, he's okay with looking for and finding the woman who's actually going to take care of him because that's what he was accustomed to growing up. Mm. Yeah. And that is the reason we have such a dysfunctional relationships in this world today because mm-hmm. of that fact because that's not normal. And if you and if you hang around a bunch of people who grew up the same way, you think it's normal. Until you see someone who looks at you and said that's abnormal as hell. Yeah. Because yeah. you see prime uh, I'm, I'm you almost the, the the what that which is not normal is becoming normal today though. Which is scary. Mm-hmm. Which is tells us how removed we are from a, a functioning family mm-hmm. because if a guy thinks that or a boy thinks that oh well you know all I gotta do is just show up and be me and you know lay the pipe every now and then and she'll keep these nice little clothes on me my nice little Jordans on here and that's all I need to do because my mama took care of everything well your mama was compensating for the man not being there because for her she's saying okay he sold me a bill of goods which was bullshit right so now I can't allow this kid who already sees his, his daddy ain't there so I'm going to have to do everything and make sure I cover both stuff the best she can. She mm-hmm. can't teach him how to be a man, but mm-hmm. she's saying at least I don't want him to want for stuff. So now this poor kid is raised up thinking, oh, that's normal. It's not normal. And then your it's father, not. you know you got a father, but he ain't never there. He ain't around, whatever. So now you compensate. You think, well, that's the way it should be. And that is us as a society that fails these kids. And then you wonder why they can't grow up, why they're not being real men. So is that the woman's fault? No, that's a man's fault. Okay. Because a man need to take men take responsibility. Boys just allow things to happen. Mm-hmm. They'll sit around like, you know what? If I ain't got enough money to buy Doritos a day, you know, she mad at me now. So maybe, you know, when she come back I can rub her back and make no, sure. No, like me like go a little further. Like the woman who real live leaves the house ends the marriage, ends the relationship, say I'm done. Like this is too much, enough is enough. We split up the household. Mm-hmm. And now you do have this dominant woman in the household. And a lot of people, you know, the whole Kevin Samuels, the women are always filing for divorce in our culture. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones who are breaking up the households, basically. Those are the ones with the child support orders. Um, <clears throat> is it our fault? Do we not stay in the relationships long enough? Um, one guy came in and he was speaking about how the women of past generations would quote unquote stick by their man's side through everything, mm-hmm. and we give up easy and early, easy and early. Different era. Uh huh. Different era because back then, if you, if you go back, let's go back sixty years, um, society was different. Um, the family unit was important because you had one breadwinner, the wife stayed home, mm-hmm. took care of the kids. So everyone had the, their distinct The roles, roles were more defined. Exactly. Had the dis- roles are now getting into a gray it's, area it's, it's, because it's of the blurred. economy. Yeah, it's, it's all blurred mm-hmm. because, again, I don't know how the hell we went from 60 years ago, you could have one person working full time mm-hmm. and take care of everything to two people mm-hmm. who have multiple jobs and still can't keep things moving. Mm-hmm. Because that's that where means we are today. That's yeah. where we are. Every today. household has two people working in it and barely getting by. Mm-hmm. And you're wondering, like, oh well, that ain't gonna affect anything. It affects, of course, it affects everything. Because if you don't have everybody in the house teaching these kids, how do kids learn? Mm-hmm. The, when the parents come home, you're gonna see them early in the morning when you get them off of school. Absolutely. And then they're going to work, and then you're gonna see the parents at nighttime when they get home from work. And those parents are tired as hell. Yeah. Been working hard all day. Yeah, all week. All week. You got yeah. homework. You got this. You, you got, got that. five days on, two days off, and then on your two days off, you tending to kids and buying groceries and um, doing laundry and tending to the household. And, you know, that's a lifestyle without sports and um, after school activity, so to oh. speak. So if you even begin to factor in, you know, one kid having an activity that they're committed to, those two days and those little, you know, hours from 6 to 10 p.m. that you thought you had, you know, even that's shut down. Gone. Um, so you have two totally depleted people, even if they're, you know, still residing in the same household, they're still depleted and they still can't, you know, pour as much mm-hmm. as, you know, the generations prior to would have been able to pour into the children and exactly. into the household. And, mm-hmm. and that's that's the problem. So now women have choices now. Before, you're right. You're going to stick with him. He may beat you. Because mm-hmm. the other thing they don't talk about is 
the abuse that happened back then. Yeah, they love to leave all of that part out and just pretend like, you know, the women were just kind of coming through the generations and girl powering it up and, hmm. you know, just rising to that. We wanted to go to work. Y'all wanted to be the bosses. Niche ain't nobody now not a, ever wanted to go to work. I never met a person who even been in the workforce for a year and said, no, nah, I'm trying to go back to that. No woman no. That I ever met said she wanted to work. No. Ever. No. No. Because it's necessity now. It's, it's a necessity, yeah. to work. Or if you want to, you know, not even to say you want the greater things. Just mm -hmm. If you want to live. You want to live. Yeah. Electric, uh, gas, yeah. cable. The, and, and these are all necessaries now. Absolutely. It's not like. It's like you go, let's say you take a traditional route and you go, you know, from your parents' house and you go to college, mm -hmm. right? Um, you go from college, you get your first job, you get an apartment. You know, naturally you're paying all your bills yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, you get with a man. He's paying bills. You're paying bills. He, why Why would you stop paying bills now? You know, we'll get yep. together, move in together, live our happily ever after lifestyle. But there's never an idea or a moment where the man is like, um, you know, I'll just take care of the bills. Technically, he's accustomed to seeing the woman bring that money into the household to take care of the household. So why would we be deviating now? It's almost like men kind of feel like it's not fair if she's not working in this generation. And, it's and, a, oh Lord. It's, it's very specific to this generation. It is. To and, where the men want to see us. They pretend like they don't want to see us in the workplace, but they definitely don't want to see their women at home in the traditional at home roles. I think that sentence, in my opinion, is disingenuous. And I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to okay. tell you why. <clears throat> traditionality always sounds good when we talk about men. Every time you have, both of you, through this last 38 minutes have talked, have said traditionally men, traditionally men, traditionally men. Let's flip that. Mm -hmm. Traditionally women were at home. Traditionally women cooked. Traditionally women held the household down. Traditionally women Make sure that the kids got taught, that the kids went to class. Make sure the kids also had things to do outside of the house. Make sure the kids in the house had responsibilities. Make sure that the kids went in and hung out with people and, and learned socialized. different, socialized mm -hmm. and shit like that because the man held the household down, mm -hmm. right? So if we're going to say that we want men to be traditional men, let's keep that, let's, that comes with everything. That comes with, yes, being protectors, yes, being providers, yes, holding the house down. But that also came with a level of stress that caused men to beat on their wives, become alcoholics, get hooked on drugs. Because there was no way to There's escape no that pressure of that's with the level you need to hang at. Mm -hmm. But if we sit here and say the exact same thing, okay... I'll be the traditional man. I'll make sure this house is taken care of. I'll make sure all the bills are paid. You don't have to worry about a thing. You want, you go take care of. Bills gone, here's the credit card, go take care of it. If I do all of that and I tell you, you need to come home, cook, clean, and make sure that everything is straight, guarantee goddamn tea or a woman's gonna be pissed off because we can do more than that. We so, can be better than that. Okay, so, so what, what our producer basically is referencing is um, our references to the traditional man and how he is or is not in his role, right? Mm -hmm. And what about the role of the traditional woman? Mm -hmm. um, to me, the woman still plays her role. Mm -hmm. That's just me personally. Mm -hmm. um, the woman still cooks. Mm -hmm. The woman still cleans. Mm -hmm. The woman still maintains the groceries in the household. Mm -hmm. The woman still maintains the academics of the child. The woman is still responsible for signing up, seeking out, and creating a schedule for the sports. Mm -hmm. The woman still maintains all of those things in the house, down to paying the bills, mm -hmm. ba balancing the checkbook. Mm -hmm. She still does those things in this non-traditional role. Those things still need to be done. That's why she's tired and depleted and screaming for help. Because the man goes out, he does, he does work, mm -hmm. but so does she. And they both put 40 hours in. I don't know who brings home how much money they bring in, but they both put in 40 hours minimum to their workplace. 
Generally, the difference is that the woman still needs to make sure that the kids have food after school. The woman needs to make sure that the kids have clean clothes that are ironed and ready to go in the morning. The woman has to make sure that, and even if you're outsourcing any of those services, she's the one who finds means to outsource it. So that's what I that's what I see inside of the households that I'm accustomed to. Mm-hmm. That the woman plays the non-traditional side of going into the workplace and still dabbles in the very traditional role of a woman um, as far as grooming the children, tending to the household, and still having t- to spend time tending to her man. Mm-hmm. I've I've not actually seen a household where the man is responsible for cooking, you know, three days a week and the woman cooks four days a week. The woman goes to the grocery store, you know, um, the first and third week of the month and the man goes the second. I've not seen these household responsibilities being broken down. Um, and perhaps that's just the households, again, that I'm accustomed to. But I don't see men doing laundry. I don't know those men. I don't know the men who wash dishes. I don't know those men. Mm -hmm. I just don't know the men who are vacuuming and scrubbing the toilets. I ain't never seen them. (laughs) I do that. No, that's uh, maybe that's why that perspective came through. Yes. Because that's just not been. I can't even say I've lived that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like I, I go to work. I'm coming in the house and I'm going to cook at the end of my work day and I'm going to also clean up at the end of my work day and my work day can be quite extensive and it doesn't matter if my spouse is out you know at the soccer field with the kids until 10 o'clock at night I know I still had to come in the house make sure dinner's together make sure there's food in the house for lunch in the morning Mm -hmm. still a very traditional sense but even though I went out into the workplace and spent minimum of the 40 hours for the week in the workplace yeah and see I think a lot of women today probably don't think that way uh, I think it just happens you know because if you're a single mom you're gonna do it all anyway because mm-hmm. it's, it's on you mm-hmm. um, and I think that's why I go back to men have to kind of look and see first of all if you got kids you should know off the bat you have to take care of your kids you have to take care of your responsibility so there's no her, her house on it's your kid so mm-hmm. you got to do what you got to do if you got to go and pick the kid up Get your ass over and pick the kid up from practice and bring him to her house. If 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 you know you you had she has been doing a weekday and you have on weekends and she's stuck at work, take the kid, go get some, you know, go to the wherever, pick him up, give him something to eat, take him home. You talking about when they're in two different households? Two different households. So that's there has to be a working relationship between the two parents to make sure that you're covering for this baby. Mm-hmm. Not that, oh, she, she, she should be able to do it. She should be all right. I mean, why I got to go and pick him up? I'm on the other side of town. That's mad as your kid. Would you want to leave your kid out there on a soccer field yeah. at 7 o'clock at night? And, and well, she, she should pick him up. He'll be all right. No. I mean, so it gets it gets weird when, when the households get split. The things that you were willing to do for your kids when you were in the household may not necessarily be the things you're willing to do for your kids when you And the question is, out why is that? that? And again, that's I don't. A I, I, I recall know. advising people, you know, when they split, when they come to me speaking about how the ex-husband is acting. I, I recall telling a few people, you know, this what that man would have did if he was still in the house, though. Sometimes they you we do things that we don't like, and because we're in separate homes, we react and give something different. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes we just kind of go all the way off the cuff. And I don't know. I don't know, but they're still your children. They still need providing um, yes. and taking care of more than just a child support check. It's it. That's the minimum. The check is the minimum. Of course, mm-hmm. baby has to eat all that. We got that. You have to be there emotionally for this kid. Mm-hmm. You got to be there because you're not. If you're not there, somebody will be there, and that person who's there for that kid may not be the person you want that person. Oh that no. Take a person be oh, no. for that kid. You and your feelings. Go ahead. Yeah, you all in your feelings. Some men feel like that other man that replaced him can take care of the kids that's why they're doing the least so those are those are the boys because yeah. those if you're a boy i'm saying this yeah. oh you wanted this yeah, you, you wanted another man yeah. to take boys. care of these kids this is what he boys got, do he got you, man. 
See, and again, that goes back to what you, they just let stuff happen. Yes, boy's gonna let boys stuff gonna happen. Boy's gonna let it happen because oh, that's all for me. Yeah. I got less on me, so I can go. That's more time to play around. That's more time to do other stuff. That's, that's more time to ultimately. Sometimes it does just kind of feel like you just throw your hands up in the air because it's more time to play. Yep. Like, damn, how much time you need to play in the field? I don't get it. How much time you want to play? And then we don't have time. We can't let our children go without because you want to play games. Yeah, no, nah, they're not missing soccer practice because I wanted to go out on a date on Wednesday. I love a good Wednesday a little outing. <laughs> exactly. But the kids had a little violin recital. Yes. No, nah, you had to show up and, you know, and be there. And, and look like something, too. That's the other part. <laughs> yeah. You can't just have your kid out there just ass out with, with no, no cleats or nothing. You're like, oh. Mm hmm. Or yeah. that the cleats getting too small and you like, nah, I'm going to get them next week. Now you need them to today. today. And yeah. that's the other thing. It's like all of that is part of growing, grazing this kid. There's times when money will come out from nowhere. You're going to need money for books. You're going to need money for cleats. You're going to need mm -hmm. money for trips. You're going to need money. So you can't say, well, let me, let me, let me catch me. Two weeks from now when yeah. I get my, my Or check. tomorrow. Or my tomorrow. favorite is a good what? tomorrow. I, I mean, oh, I got to run to the bank. You, 2022? You been hitting me with that cash app. You been hitting me with that Zelle. What you, what you, what There's you too many about? avenues out here. Exactly. Yeah. So, again, it's just about ownership, owning, and accountability is missing so much in this world because everybody wants to pass the buck. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is nobody really – you just want to push it off. Rather than say, you I think that's a it. good I, that's a good way to put it. Everybody wants to kind of pass the buck. Nobody wants to say, you know what, the buck stops. It stops here. Because yes. at some point we have to correct the action. Yes. Right? And I, I just hate to put it on the men on the men, but like if you're supposed to be the the head, the the dominant, the lead, wouldn't wouldn't we have to start with you all? We're gonna follow. We're gonna follow. We're gonna help. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna sit in our role. I don't. I just don't know that we ever came out of our role. We're in protection mode. We're in warrior mode, perhaps. But I think we still know our position. Now, can all of the women cook nowadays? I don't. I don't know. I, I just. <laughs> I, I don't. Because I'm hearing, you know, do a little birdie out here. <laughs> that, that the women out here, they just can't do what they're supposed to do Ooh. in the kitchens nowadays. Oh, yeah. I don't know where the hell that fell off. But yeah, they, they can't. They, they can still clean, though, at least. I think they can still clean. <laughs> some, some are pretty much, you know, they spend most of their time in the damn, you know, salons. Uh, and, and you see them. No, don't and... don't put them off on my clientele. <laughs> no, sir. Not my ladies. No, sir. -y. You will not. No, my ladies do the cooking and the cleaning. Yes. Uh-uh. See. My and... girl, my divas can cook. Okay. Yeah. So and that and yeah. that to me is is kind of the the issues we have. This is getting worse. It's not mm -hmm. getting better. Um, because it's it's going to sound bad. A lot of men are going from head of household to dependence. On taxes. If you look at a tax tax form, they're wow. no longer head of household. They're dependents. Mm. And that's where it shouldn't be. But also, everybody needs to be in the group and helping each other do what we do. Prime example, when I said that, I, you know, I'll clean the toilet, dump the trash, mm -hmm. do all that stuff. I do it because it has to be done. Mm -hmm. I don't sit here and say, you know what? These dishes need to be washed. Fuck that. I ain't doing this shit. Wait till my wife get home and clean mm -hmm. this shit. And I've been there all day long, and I watch. I walk by the dish many times, adding more dishes, because that, that ain't my that ain't my job. No, you do you do what you gotta do to keep to keep harmony, to keep synergy. Because when she come home from work, she tired. You, you gotta look at a whole bunch of dishes that mm -hmm. you walk by thirty five times during the day at mm -hmm. least. But you just kept adding on to it. <laughs> yeah, you did, because you was hungry all damn all day. All goddamn day. It started off with seven dishes inside that sink, and you done added seven more. Now it's full. I come in the house, and you looking at me like, babe, what's for dinner? Not a damn thing, because the kitchen is dirty. Okay? How about yes. that? Yes. How about that? Like, what the damn? What the hell? So, again, it has to be a give and take thing, mm -hmm. but that means... A lot of guys have to look at that, stop looking at that shit backwards. Like, you know, I ain't gonna watch because men don't watch this. Men don't do this. Nick, mm. motherfuckers, if you live by yourself, you had to wash your clothes, you had yes. to wash your dishes, clean yes. your toilet, uh, vacuum your damn house. I'm gonna stop saying house. yes because if we live by ourselves, we have to pay our bills. And I don't wanna yes. say yes to that. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, you do all that shit. So let me tell you, my hey, hey, I'm gonna That's tell why you. we was trying to take all that up off your hands, you know. But y'all was like, yeah, but we, you still gotta go to work. You're like, huh? Yeah. Huh? Hey, you know. And again, if you're living separately, you're gonna you have to do all yes. that for yourself. Now, yes. if you come together. What you need to do, you have to have a conversation. For mm-hmm. some reason, people don't have that conversation. Like, you have your own spot, I have my own spot, and then we decide, oh, let's move in together. Yeah. That point, you have to have a conversation. Like, listen, this is how I run my house. This is what I do. And you're Defining like, roles and responsibilities of you. the household. Don't figure yes. that shit out when you get, to, well, damn, I didn't realize you just, you hang your bra over top of the damn uh, uh, shower, shower pole. <laughs> I ain't realize you hang that. Shit. <laughs> That's what? my good underwire. I can't mess that up. <laughs> I Let feel that, that drip time. dry. I'm like, what are you talking about drip yeah. dry? What the heck? Yeah. Hey, so these are conversations you got to have beforehand, like cooking. You know, can you cook? Yes. If you do cook, what do you cook? Is everything you cook, <laughs> does it come from a store and you put it in a microwave? Or do you sit there and you mix ingredients and really make stuff? That's a difference. You know, I can no, cook that's meatloaf. not because you can't say you cook if you use the microwave. What no, type of no, nonsense is that? No, if you have to use a microwave other than warming up food, yeah. you have to use the cook. Yeah, we don't know what you're making in there. I don't know what you're making. It's a I reheater. don't have a that's cool. not the cook. <laughs> it's a reheater. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's so, sadness. But these are conversations. They have whole cookbooks in thrift stores. You had on micro, you see where all those cookbooks went on how to microwave meals. <laughs> they put them in the thrift stores. <laughs> They're not true. in anybody's homes. No, nope. it's not a good idea. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> no, and, and most of the time, you know, you can pick, you can pick up your phone and look and find a recipe. Oh yeah. So then, I mean, if you're serious. not cooking in today's like day and age, I just always assumed it's because you didn't want to cook. Like, and you just don't want to because YouTube will walk you through any recipe you want to make. Everything you could think of YouTube, you can find on YouTube. Yeah, like it'll walk you all the way through. So if you can't cook, you don't want to cook. That's what I normally, like, you can't season up. No, First of all, what is that? Lowry's? I haven't used Lowry's, it in years. Uh, yeah, that's Seasonal. Season- Some is, put it in the oven. Sprinkle it on. I mean, start somewhere. And Start if you, somewhere. If you got high blood pressure and, and diabetes and all that stuff, use some Mrs. Dash. No, you should use Mrs. Dash all the time. Like, that's more flavor. If you don't feel like <laughs> cutting true. up these onions and <laughs> all these true. other aromatics, yeah. You have to use, but you have to start somewhere. The somewhere. idea that you can't cook, like, that's just lazy. Which means you had to learn that or not learn it from someone. That means that that's goes back a horrible to, that influence. That goes back to your mama. That means you, she lived in McDonald's. So that your mother can't by. cook. Your mama can't so cook. So generationally, think about it. We're not cooking. No. Okay. If wow. you're a mama who works hard every day and you say, you know, I gotta feed these kids, and you're like, you know, I'm tired. So I'm gonna stop at McDonald's. Because growing up, no, we never we stopped at McDonald's yeah, every once in a we while. We got we would get beat if we didn't cook. Like, first of all, the kids used to work the house. That's the other weird part. Yep. Like so, in my I'm the youngest, so maybe once upon a time my dad washed the dishes when it was just maybe him, my mom, and the oldest sister, right? Mm-hmm. Perhaps mm-hmm. I know because my mom didn't work till I was twelve anyway. Yeah, so oh, I don't. Your dad never washed dishes? I, I can't say that he has. I oh, wow. I've never seen this. Okay. I, I just like, <laughs> it's a it would be a bizarre concept to see my father first of all having a need to wash dishes. There's three children in the household, and mm-hmm. then he's always raising somebody else's kid, right? Yeah. Like there's always a cousin coming to live with us because you know he's just that type of guy. Like mm-hmm. yeah, no, send your kid here, we'll take care of him type of person. So it's at least three or four people children in that household. Oh yeah. And you know between the kids, y'all gonna cook, y'all gonna clean, y'all gonna do a whole. Everything. Yeah, y'all gonna do everything in there. Y'all not gonna stress your mother out neither. Yeah, and my mother, I, if I was twelve, that means my oldest sister was nineteen. Okay. So that's when my mom went to work. Okay. So we were pretty. Take that meat out. Yeah, we were. We were. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So no, we, my mom wasn't stopping at no McDonald's, and you were responsible for cooking and cooking a good meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as young and um, as young as real young, twelve, ten. I don't know. Yeah, see, and that's remember the that? difference. I, rem- I remember yeah. food always being cooked. Yeah. Growing up, food was always cooked. I mean, it was always, the oven was always, 
the oven was not just a place you cut bags in. You know, nowadays you open up somebody's oven, they got grocery bags in there, they got recyclable bags. So it's in there. a storage center? Yeah. That means the it's oven? so little that they got between that and a damn damn uh <laughs> dishwasher, they got all kinds of bags in there. In the dishwasher? In the dishwasher. Open up bags and follow hitching your hitching your foot. Those must be are they in there or on the side? They're in there. <laughs> You open it up, the bag fall out, fall out on your foot. And you're like, oh shoot! So yeah, it's just it's just storage. <laughs> it's just storage, you know. So again, they ain't about teaching these these women, these young women, old young men how to cook. So uh-huh. they 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 just learning from go 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 to churches and 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 y'all, Wendy's and all y'all that other stay stuff. up out of the Chipotle. Stay up out of Wendy's. Get get back to the kitchen, Every, everybody, please, because this is sadness. <laughs> This is just get. I I just I just assumed everybody can cook. I'm gonna be honest Shoot. with you. I just that's just what I assumed. Shoot. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. No. <sighs> if you ask, if you ask a, a young lady to boil water, she was like, <laughs> "What does that do? First of all, find a pot. How old water. is she? Oh, probably like 20, 21. Probably can't cook with a damn." Now, see, we, we just got finished getting beat, okay, for not cooking on time. You ain't take that meat out? Like, yes. You, we, get, we used to get in trouble for not taking the meat out of the freezer in the morning before you go to school. Yep. Right, mine is 6 o'clock in the morning. Yes. You, yes. you better take that meat out. Your mom, you already left out of the house. Mm-hmm. You could have been took the meat out. Mm-mm, but you made sure I had a job in this house, and that job was to take that meat out. Yes, but yeah. that doesn't happen. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen to all anymore. I mean, it's a different world now. I bet you can go back and ask a lot of twenty-some-year-old women who taught them to cook. They probably say, "I don't know how to cook," or wow. maybe they went to their grandmother's house who cooked. Maybe their mama cooked. Maybe now and then, maybe Sunday she cooked. Maybe some days she cooked. But you have to look at it. You have to have the women who now have to work forty-plus hours. But you now, still got to teach them certain things. It's like hygiene. This is this our survival. These are survival uh, yeah. things. Yes. Like, yes. you don't know how to cook. It's a bizarre concept to me. It's a lot. It's and you, okay, I'm a chef. No, I just want y'all. Right. But, I just want but, y'all all to know. I'm, I'm, I'm borderline a chef. Like, so <laughs> just so we can get that off, everybody knows. Yeah, you know, it's just cert- certain things, conversations, you know, certain things you need to have with your kids that you just <laughs> It just don't happen. Mm. It, it should happen. Mm-hmm. It just don't happen. I mean, it, let's, let's go back to the world of, you know, talk about sex. We never, growing up, was one of those things that nobody really talked about. All you kept hearing like, don't get nobody pregnant. And I you're mean, like, how much of this, like, I don't, yes, yeah, so this is making me itch right now. <laughs> like, how much conversation of sex are we supposed to have with the children? Well, to be honest, you shouldn't have, it should be, it be on the level. So like when you're little, there's that no touch, you know. Okay, okay, that, you know, Don't okay. touch here, don't yeah. touch there. Private areas. Private areas. Respect and boundaries, okay. Then you, as you grow, and then of course for women, for your little girls, you know, to get to that point where they have to have that discussion about, Come in the things. age of the menstrual cycle and stuff like okay. Exactly. And for boys, you know, you gotta wash yourself, make sure you keep it clean down there so you don't end up with any infections and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then when you start to get that feeling, you say, Okay, you're gonna have that feeling, so we're gonna have to have that discussion with you on what that what to do with that feeling. And My mother to- loved books. Oh, uh, she loved to buy an a- anatomy books. Oh, and Lord. just kinda I mean, just books about any you know. Uh-huh. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> read. <laughs> yeah, read, read this. Have, have read. a conversation. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. you know, it's uncomfortable for them to have a conversation. And for me, I'm like, you don't tell me. I'm gonna go to the library. So I go in the library. Yeah, grab, books, grab like, a book. It's every. Yeah, most of the things are in the book. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, mm-hmm. and, and, but that means <laughs> you have to take or that. auntie or aunt. Yeah. Somebody. <laughs> Hopefully, it wasn't a cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will hope. Oh, my God. But these are the little things you don't think about, but then, you know, you start to say, you know, because kids, you know, nowadays they're smarter than when we was growing up because you have the Internet so you can find different things you want yes. for. Back then, you know, people had conversations. You knew they knew nothing about it. Knew. <laughs> oh, my God, he touched my hand. I'm going to get pregnant tomorrow. What? <laughs> what? 
he touched your hand. He touched my hand in a, in a lovely way, and he rubbed my hand like that. And I was, I was like, the oh, kid Lord. on the playground telling people, nah, that, that can't happen. Nah, <laughs> this is why. Yeah. I had yes. a problem. Yeah. Because like, I had all the books. I had yeah. all the books. Yeah. Then you got to explain yeah. to him. But then you don't want to mm-hmm. bust them out in front of everybody. So you just kind of said, listen, what you said was dumb and wrong. No, I was, I was a know-it-all. I'm going to bust it out in front of you. Yeah. Oh, no. So you saw how she rolled her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you cannot get pregnant. Like, yeah, no, I was probably a know-it-all. Oh, <laughs> Lord. See, <laughs> see, so, see, so these are things that, you know, and again, a mama having that kind of discussion with her son is, un- to me, be uncomfortable. Because again, you know, yeah. it's like you know, you shouldn't be. Well, you know, he see this girl. Cause he I don't like want because technically, you're like he ain't supposed to be having sex. No way. No. Yeah. But, but you know, for boys, you know, one day you want to hit him. You know, you want to hit the girl. <laughs> you know, that, that one. You know, fifth grade, you want to hit him and slap him a little bit, and you want to push him in the, in the dirt. Then sixth grade come, you don't want to hear this, but you don't want to hear no more. For some you reason, you like, touch I just want to touch you. I don't mm-hmm. want. I don't know why I want to touch you, but I want to touch you. Yeah. But you know, like. Why I want to touch you? Then that, you go to your father and say, hey, dad, listen. So, you know, Sue. And Sue you mean Sue from last year who you punched? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to punch you this year. Yeah. I want to touch her. Okay. First of all, so you're going to touch Sue. Because today, you could be in jail, put out of school. For no, you can. you can. You day, can. Back then, you were going to slap her butt or whatever. Uh-huh. You may get in trouble. She may hit you. Or yeah, they just call your mother. Let them know. Nowadays, they call them the police on you. Oh, you, you going to the post. Hey, what? They're locking you up. Clink, clink. I'd act up. See, see, see. I'm that type of mom. I wish you would. Yeah, <laughs> wish, what, first of all, she probably threw her booty in his direction. <laughs> and, and see, and see, that's the other thing. The other thing is you when you have a daughter <laughs> who's a little more probably developed, because back then, when they were 12, they looked 12. It looked like they had nothing. They were kids. They were 12. Now, 12? No, 12 <laughs> I was, was like. I told y'all was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, 12 now, you're like, you're like, damn, girl, you on the pole? You can't even go to that strip club? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to really have that discussion. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, make sure she's dressed a certain way. She's covered up. She's like, understand what the look is going to receive. Yes. That's the conversations that's happening. You have that's to have that, that com- conversation. That yeah. You can't walk around and look like Nick Minaj. You can't go around and put stuff no, on No, you can. You. you can. But just understand what that's, what that's going to get from you. What it's going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You can do whatever you want to do in this life. Mm-hmm. First, it just can't be my kid doing it. That's, no, that's no, no, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. You can dress however you want. Mm-hmm. Or it's it's provocative. Yeah. You have to understand that the way that you dress can be provocative. It can provoke certain things from a man. And if you're a child and you don't know how to handle that attention or you don't even know that that attention is potential to come your mm-hmm. way and that you're a child and this is going to be adult attention mm-hmm. that's going to be coming in your direction, mm-hmm. no, nah, you, you're going to have to talk to her. You, you You're gonna have, have to have to. the proper conversations. Yeah. You're gonna have to. Because again, if she, you don't, and you have to ask yourself this question why is she dressing that way? Is she dressed that way because she sees someone dressed that way, or is she dressed that way because she wants to get some sort of attention? I mean, no, th- that's a we had we had it and it was very innocent, but one of the girls here, her daughter wanted to wear um she described them as booty shorts and crop tops. Mm-hmm. I said, well, maybe it's just high, she just needs some high-waisted shorts and crop tops because those are trending, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, you can kind of play with the clothes and dress them any type of way. A crop top can be worn with a tank top underneath. Mm-hmm. It is, it's, it's grooming and, and directing them in the right direction. So why, you, why, why do you want to wear that? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me, let me, I'll kind of entertain you a little bit on that. You know, mm-hmm. you want to wear a cute dress. Let me try to find you something that's going to actually flatter you. Yes. Right? Yes. Because sometimes it's about something that's being, like, flattery towards your age group. My yes. niece is, how old is she now, 14? Mm-hmm. And she wants to wear clothes that, like, she has a very nice shape. Mm-hmm. But some, sometimes when a child is wearing clothes that are, like, super provocative, mm-hmm. it, just, it looks bad. Yes. You know, it looks like you're doing too much. And to you, you know, you cute because this is just kind of what you just started. But everybody else in the room is judging you. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's like I got to pull baby girl to the side just to kind of have that conversation. Like, yeah, but 
I know you kind of want to show off those legs, but find a dress that kind of show off your legs that looks like it's something for a teenager. Yes. As opposed to something that's for like a 30 year old, yes. you know, woman that's got like all types of hips and mm -hmm. yeah, all those assets. You have to, because yeah. again, if you don't have that conversation with them, mm -hmm. then that could lead to some other issues that she's not ready for. I mean, if you're not influencing these children, somebody else, like you said before, is. So when you go out into the world, you know, somebody sees her dressing a certain way. Well, a man, you mm -hmm. know, let's just be up front. Yes. A man sees her dressing a certain type of way, he's going to start whispering in her ear, influencing mm -hmm. her, making her feel good. So now she starts to believe that, you know, the way I'm dressing here gets me a certain type of attention and... If you don't know no better, you could believe that that attention from the older man is proper. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you're going back to if you're not involved in this kid's development from the beginning, and this kid's just basically just wearing stuff just mm -hmm. to wear things. An and, empty vessel. And somebody else is mm -hmm. filling that vessel. Yeah. So it's yeah. important that, you know, men – stay involved in their kids' lives, Absolutely. that they stay connected to those More kids. More than monetarily. No, you have to be there total. Mm -hmm. You have to be there because by denying that child, you're denying that child the love and the support that that kid deserves. Mm -hmm. He deserves, she or he, he or she deserves that respect, deserves you being in that life, deserves to show that love that Real love, not mm -hmm. just, you know. And you as the parent deserves what that relationship reciprocates back. Yes. Right? Like, it is something, like, incredible to have some of the relationships that you have with your children. Yes. Um, you have an adult child. Yes. Right? And yes. think about the relationship you had with him when he was five. Yes. And then how awesome it is to kind of still have a dope relationship with, you know, that yes. in your head, it's like, that's still my five-year-old. But now you guys can basically go out for beers together type of thing. <laughs> exactly, you drinks know? and yeah. stuff together. And had that real conversation. <laughs> yep. Like, I remember my son was three, and we would, you know, I'd go pick him up from mom's house, and we'd probably have, like, another 40-minute drive to get home. And we would talk the whole way home. Mm -hmm. And he would talk my head off, and the kid is 16 <laughs> now. And, and, you know, he, he wants to eat the last of my coffee ice cream. I don't play any games with my coffee ice cream oh, type Lord. of thing. But he looked at me, he grabbed up two spoons, and he was like, Ma, let's talk politics. <laughs> We're still talking, right? Like, these relationships, they're dope. They are. They and are. they feed you right back. What you just said, mm -hmm. it feeds you. Mm-hmm. It, it, keep, it doesn't date you mm -mm. because so many people want to be right, want to be parents, and I don't want to be their, my kid's friend. I just want to be their parent. Mm -hmm. Well, understand this. When you say that, when you start to do that and you don't respect them as the little people that they mm -hmm. are. As people first. Mm -hmm. And when they grow up, and now you, you're now at a certain a stage in your life where you're like, I wish I had a relationship with my kid. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of messed it up when you want to be just – parent and not friend mm -hmm. now you're looking for that that relationship that you never fostered yeah because you understand that that relationship is dynamic it's constantly moving right they evolving they don't need yep. you to parent on them at five Ooh. the same way they do at 10 oh 10 is not the same type of parenting as it is at 16 nope so if you're not constantly and it's not to say you're like the same type of friend as if you all were peers no but your children should feel you sh they should feel friendly with you, right? Yes. My kids are definitely not my friends, but do they feel like they like I am friendly to them and mm -hmm. very approachable? Absolutely. You have to be. Yeah. Because if you cut that relationship off when they get of age, mm -hmm. then they're not going to tell you anything. Yes. Why would they? Yes. You were never there when they were little. So yes. why all of a sudden they're, well, what happened in school there? What happened in college? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I, went to, I went to class. I ate. And then you d you allow them to give you the nothing, and then you give you give them nothing, and then and then you okay with just not having no relationship. And then you look. Then the regrets kick in mm -hmm. because now their lives will kick in, and you'll mm -hmm. you'll start to follow them through Facebook or IG yep. because they don't talk to you. Yep. And when you do talk to them, or oh, dad, I'm busy. Yep. You know, catch me catch me next week. Yep. And you're like, wow, I wish we wish we were closer. 
Well, again, you didn't start when you were little. You didn't care about it when you were little. Mm -hmm. So you want to be in that whole power trip, that power dynamic, mm -hmm. which it shifts because if you live long enough. Yes. They will take care of you. And you want the shift to occur. That's the point of having the children is so that as you age, you have someone who takes care of you and understands you and all your little quirks and all the nonsense and BS that you have to offer because every person is hard to deal with. <laughs> you yes, know what I'm saying? Exactly. And you want people dealing with you who already know you and accept you for who you are. Yep. Your children will always accept you for who you are because it's over those years that you're grooming them and they're growing up. Mm -hmm. You have accepted them for exactly who, well, you should have been. Yeah. You should and fostering, you know, so, so they can come into their own. Mm -hmm. So now as your age and they respect what you've done for them. Mm -hmm. So they'll definitely be able to reciprocate that. Without question. Without mm -hmm. question. Like I said, I told my son this. When I get old, oh, I want some pudding. Mm -hmm. As long as I have some Jello pudding, yeah. we're good. I told my kids my coffee ice cream. Oh, so yeah. you got this. They so, got me up 11 o'clock at night going to the train station, picking up extra cousins so they can have their great <laughs> big, you know, extra loud slumber parties, fighting in the middle of the floor, watching football. <laughs> I said, y'all know, now I better make sure when I'm old, y'all give me my coffee ice cream whenever I want it. Anytime. Yeah. I said it, what, a few months ago. I keep saying it so that they know. You, you keep go. reminding them of your pudding. What flavor is it? Uh, I can, I go with chocolate and vanilla. If I, as long as I have chocolate and vanilla, I'm uh -huh. good. Okay. But if he ain't got neither, yeah. I ain't going to visit that Bama at all. <laughs> <laughs> he better not, he better not, mm, he better not come to my house. Or I better not come to his house. He better not, he, mm -hmm. he better got that pudding. Mm -hmm. He better have it. Mm -hmm. So, you know. When so. I go see my grandmother, I do check up on her freezer. Yeah. What kind yeah. of ice cream you got in here, Grandma? Yeah. You got to. Because yes. sometimes, you know, you got to maybe look and take that top off. You got to sure take no the top <laughs> off. That's for sure. You got to look and make sure there's mm -hmm. no ice crystals in there. That's it. Know, that's it's like, it. ah, right. she need another one. Yeah, I'm going to do it this yeah. way. I'm going to go get her another that's one. That's it. That's so, right. You know, that, so, you know, we're basically telling y'all fathers, be a part of your kids' life. And mothers. And, and mothers. And mothers. Be a part of the, the kids' life. properly into these children. Yes. Influence them properly. Yes. Right? You have because to. Because what we're seeing today are children who are not children anymore who have been influenced mm -hmm. poorly. Very poorly. Um, the girls can't cook. <gasps> I'm all devastated on camera. The girls can't <laughs> I had no clue. So y'all telling me everybody don't have adobo in their house? That's what mm. you're trying to say? Mm. Y'all don't have a little medley of like seasoning in the refrigerator? Mm. Wow, I'm gonna have to get a cooking channel together. Hey, you might have to. Because <laughs> yeah. again, and, and bring we bring some young people here and just say, hey, can you cook anything? Wow, we gotta mm -hmm. go out into the streets for that one. You're gonna have Let's to. just go out, yeah, gonna survey the crowd, see who can and cannot cook. You'd be surprised, man. And some of these these young ladies are about to go to college, mm -hmm. where you know they're gonna have to do something, or they can eat ramen noodles for the next four years, and that's a terrible thought. That's rough. But, you know, again, this is... mess up your insides. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. But, you know, again, to, uh, another important message for these these people out here about the importance of, the important of being a good parent. Mm -hmm. Not a great parent. I'm just just, a, good just parent. a good one. Yeah. You know, and it, it, God damn it. We ain't tell you to go out there and, and read books and, and all that stuff. You know, you know what doing bad, you're doing bad as a parent. Nobody got to tell you that. It's pretty easy. You know if you're not doing right as a parent. Mm -hmm. so, or you're not doing enough. Yes. Yes. So do better. Do we, more. Do better, do more. And with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of, you know, on the mic with the M. And T. We will holler at you guys later on. Hit that like and subscribe button. Be back again very soon. Peace. Peace.